Joining us now from Toronto, Kevin O'Leary. Nice to see you, Mr. O'Leary. Great to be here. Thank you. You had the shortest window to sign up new members because of when you decided to jump into the race. How challenging was that uh, for you, given that you, know, you had less time than a lot of other people? I wasn't sure how it was going to work, but what ended up being a remarkable lift for me was social media. I have over 4 million followers on the various platforms, and it worked for fundraising and it worked for um, membership sales. I think uh, when we get to the 5 o'clock deadline today, I will have broken all records in a 90-day period. I will also have broken records for the party in the number of people between the ages of 18 and 35 that have become members. Many of these people have never voted before, and I think that's very important for the Conservative Party to expand our base. So I'm looking forward to releasing uh, this list to the party, and then I'm wanting them to audit every single name, including everyone in the entire list. Are you going to release your list, the, the, the numbers that you just said that you, you claim you have? Are you going to make that public as early as today? I'm discussing that with the campaign now. I'd like to. I want this to be a totally transparent, um, you know, campaign and I'd like the, the list itself to be totally transparent. I want to shine a light of transparency on the practices that are not just pr the purview of the of the Conservative Party. What I've discovered has been around in all of campaigns, provincially and federally, for a long time. It, it turns out that campaign operatives, and I'm not pointing a finger at any one individual, but these are not people that have to work in an industry where compliance and integrity is part of the metric. I live in the financial services world. You do something like this, you lose your license in perpetuity. So I want to make sure that whoever wins the Conservative Party leadership does not start their mandate under the cloud of fraud. So I'm going to be encouraging the party to take my names and every other name on the list, including the existing list, and run the software through it to make sure that we can proudly say there is absolutely no fraud in these names. What about support with inside the Conservative caucus? You have one uh, sitting MP who supports you. You announced a former MP, uh, Julian Fantino, yesterday. But how do you manage a caucus that uh, broadly is not supporting you publicly and that you might not even want to be in the House to lead because you say that's not where your time is best spent? No, I, I think those are two different issues. I'm not a politician. I come from the outside. I don't expect a, a lot of people to know me inside caucus. They're going to get to know me uh, when, I win, when I win the leadership, obviously. But the decision to actually take a seat is really something I'll discuss with them because at the end of the day, we want to do exactly what Trudeau did. He spared very little time in Ottawa, even though he had a seat. But what he was very successful at is getting people between the ages of 18 and 35 to vote. And of those that voted, he got over 80%. Right. That's how he won the majority mandate. I'm a bit of a numbers guy, but I'm going to be spending my time ripping back all that support from him because we've never had a conservative candidate that gets 1,000 students out at a university, as I've been doing across the country, ripping all them back. And I found out they're not happy. They don't have jobs. Trudeau lied to them. He offered them jobs. He said, vote for me, I'll get you a job. None of them have jobs. In fact, the economy is collapsing because of its policies. You, you think the economy is collapsing? What evidence is there of that? Absolutely. What we have here, and you can see it, you're seeing a slowdown in GDP growth. You're seeing fighting amongst the provinces on transfer payments for health care. But most, most discouraging is for the first time in my life, our generation, my children, a 20-year-old son and a 24-year-old daughter, they don't have the same opportunity I have in terms of jobs. We have double-digit Double-digit unemployment amongst young people in Canada. I blame Trudeau for all of it. His policies are not growth. They're not pro-capital. Well, in fact, in fact, in fact, in fact, in fact, a quarter of a million jobs have been created in in the past month or so. Uh, GDP has increased. The majority of them are has, has increased. Majority over of part-time and service jobs. I'm sorry, you can't tell me that things are good with young people in jobs. Just recently, we've seen hundreds of thousands peeled out of Ontario because of policies there. But the one that's most striking that I know you watched last week is Trudeau goes to Texas with Rachel Notley and gives a PowerPoint presentation about carbon tax while $12 billion leaves Alberta and goes where? To Texas. Well, These are another, failed another, that, policies. That one, one company, to be fair, Mr. O'Leary, one company left and another company bought it up. So it's not like the industry collapsed. Anyway, I want to move on from that. On asylum seekers, you said the government Excuse should use. Excuse me, that's not exactly what happened. 
we are not attracting foreign capital anymore. The only people that are willing to buy are Canadians, and that's great, except if we don't bring more capital in this country, we will not be able to build out infrastructure. We'll not be able to create new right. jobs. Look, I'm sorry. I've watched the numbers. $12 billion is a lot of money. I know, but you're, you're, pre you're, pretending, you're pretending that the industry had somehow collapsed when, in fact, it was uh, one company went to another company. So I, I, I'm not sure what the claim is. I'm not, pretend, I'm not pretending anything. I just gave you the numbers. $12 billion moved to Texas, yes or no? There was one company that left and another company that came in. So I'm not, I'm not sure why you say $12 billion left. $12 billion okay. left Canada and We're, went to I want to move on That's to the beginning I wanna, of, a, of a deluge of capital. I want to move on to asylum seekers. You've said the government should use the notwithstanding clause to get around a 1985 Supreme Court decision that guaranteed the right of refugee claimants. What about Canada's commitments to the UN Convention on Refugees? We have, we have two issues there. We've got two different groups of people coming into Canada right now. Some of them are getting American visas, stopping in an uh, airport like LaGuardia or Kennedy in New York, and then 30 minutes later boarding a flight to Canada from wherever they came from and going up to an officer and asking for a hearing. So they had no intention of staying in the U.S. in the first place. They should, because we have a, an agreement with the United States, that says if you go to a port of entry like this, we turn you back to, to get your fair hearing in front of an American judge. Yes. The problem we're trying to solve as Canadians now is what happens when you don't go to a port of entry. A loophole mm -hmm. in the law says you can ask for a hearing and start your journey in Canada. And what's so unfair about that and why Canadians are alarmed at it is you're jumping the queue to the thousands of people that have been waiting patiently, legally trying to come into this country. Right. Now, I'm suggesting a two-step process. What should have occurred was Ralph Goodale, who didn't use this opportunity. And by the way, I've been trying to get the data right. out of Trudeau on yeah. how fast this is growing every week. They're not issuing it anymore. You should ask for it we, because we, it must be an alarming increase. The, the question is specific, and, though. And My so question now, was specific, Mr. O'Leary. It was what would you do about the U.N. declaration on refugees? Would you just pull Canada out of it because you would no the, longer the, the, be observing that no, declaration? No, no, no. We, we have a process. Away. No, we have a process for refugees and we're keeping it. And I'm a refugee. My parents came in legally. They applied, they got their papers, they came in. Then what That's would the notwithstanding clause be used for? What is the notwithstanding clause going to be used for then? <clears throat> what it does is if the U.S. can't help us with the flood of people coming over the border for whatever reason they're doing this, because all they have to do is modify the agreement we have with them now to include the 49th parallel. The same rule we have at the port of entry, if they're not willing to do that or they can't or for whatever reason, we have the right as a country within the UN agreements to protect our borders. And what we're saying is all that will happen is if you decide, if we use the notwithstanding clause to do this, you need parliament, you need the majority, and we have that. So all, the, all that has to happen is we change the law that says if you walk over the border and basically you are asking for your, your right to start the refugee mm -hmm. process, we send you back to the U.S. where our agreement says you have the right to see a judge and go through the application so, so, there. So, but why do you need the notwithstanding clause to do that? No, why do you need the notwithstanding clause to do that? All you have to do is withdraw because from the Because I'm saying you would have to use the not because you can't, if you, the agreement we have now has a big loophole in it. That's the problem. We have lawyers telling people now, do not come to a port of no, entry but, in Canada. But why, are you Simply saying pull out of the safe third border. country agreement? Is that what you're saying? No, we leave it exactly the way it is. But okay. it gives Canadians an option to protect its border. Look, this is a very interesting solution to the problem. It requires I, I don't, I don't, I don't see what I don't see. Trudeau so are, doesn't have. Are you comfortable then? Uh, what sections of the charter would not apply to refugees then? Look, the, the bottom line is you keep everything in place. And this is after you've asked Homeland Security. Apparently, Ralph Goodale forgot to ask them while they were here. Could you help us close this loophole with the agreement we already have with you? If they say, no, we can't help you, we take it into our own hands and simply say, leave everything in place. But what we use is a change to the law that says, if you don't want to take your chances in front of an American court, an independent court, which is the agreement we have with the United States right now, and you want to come into Canada instead, we'll turn you back to the U.S. If the U.S. says no, just like we do at the port of entry now, that's the agreement we have now. We're just applying it to the 49th yes, except, parallel. Except, if the U.S., for yeah. whatever reason, says no, says no, we simply send them back to the country of their origin. And we continue so the are process. So you, are you comfortable sending refugees who feel persecuted or feel they may be killed back to their country of origin? No, I want to send them back to the United States. We're talking about the ones that are coming over the U.S. border. They have the right under our agreement 
to get a hearing in front of a judge, and the UN has called that a safe country to do it. And we have a, a very good relationship with the US. But, I'm not talking about militarizing the border or anything like that. But it, I'm it just is not, giving Canadians yeah, it is not, an option. Uh, uh, with, with, with all due respect, it is not clear to me why you would just not pull out of the safe third country agreement. I don't understand why you think you need no, to No, I don't want to do that. Do why do I want to do that? Because why then do people I want to do would, that? That's because a bad then, tactic. I, because then people would be forced to come through the border legally. No, no, no. We have an agreement with the U.S. and we have a friendly relationship and we want a thinner border, not a thicker one. We'll simply ask them. Ralph forgot to do that. I can help him with that, too. Sit down and ask them, will you help what? us close this loophole? So do you if not think that sections reason, of the charter should apply no. to refugees who come into this country? Because that's what the no, Singh, that's what the Singh look, decision says. No, it doesn't. What this says is, look, if you are a refugee, you want to come to Canada, apply like everybody else. We, I have no problem with that. Make your application. I'm trying to stop people walking over frozen rivers with their children, losing their fingers, walking into Canada from frostbite. That's crazy. What I'm trying to say is once you put this in place, that flow will stop because lawyers will stop encouraging them to breach the rules. They'll encourage them to go to the port of entry and make their application okay. there. Okay. I'm Keeping within our agreement with the United States. Okay. No problem with this. It's going to work. And by the way, Trudeau's right. father gave him this in 1982. Use it. The notwithstanding clause. You realize it's only been used four times and for nothing like this. Listen, it's there for a reason. In extraordinary situations, you use it. And yes, I realize it's been used four times, and we're going to use it a fifth time as soon as I get to Ottawa. Okay. Mr. O'Leary, I've, I've run out of time. I appreciate your time. We'll talk again, sir. Take care. Bye-bye.